What's up guys, Carter here from FPV Films and today we are going to be building this. Alright guys, so we are over here on the bench now and as you can see we have everything laid out. Now this might look a little bit complicated, we have a whole jumble of stuff over here, but I've basically just taken everything we need, unpackaged it, and laid it out so it's more easy to access and uh, build. This is the frame itself, the Shendron Squirt. Now of course this isn't the whole frame, this is the main plate, this is the top plate. Over here, like I said, we have some more hardware. And then of course, the most important things that makes this a Cinewhoop is these things here. These are prop guards as well as, what are they called? Ducted fans. We will be adding these on later. Here we have battery straps, camera, flight controllers, VTX, motors, all these good things. If you aren't certain exactly what these things are, we will be coming out with a video soon exactly on how to build a drone from the bottom up if you're a beginner, if you're intermediate, advanced, whatever. But today we are just going to be showing you how to build this so we won't jump into too much detail. With that being said, let's get to building and let's do it. Alright. To begin this build, I'm going to take our motors and start by mounting them up one at a time. You can do this any way you want. I personally just like to mount the motors with two screws just to save time and then if you want you can come back later and mount the remaining two. Alright guys, so as you can see, I have continued and put all four motors on. Uh, right now it's sort of a mess, a jumble of wires with all these things just hanging out, but we'll take care of that in just a second. Now the next step is we have this um, Rush ESC, it's actually VTX, FC, and ESC combo. Uh, it's They all stack together like this, it's a super clean setup. But we're going to start with this ESC right here, basically we need to put the standoffs through the bottom mount this and this is what we can actually solder all the motors to. Alright, now one little tip and uh, trick that I like to use is I like to take just a little piece of tape, doesn't matter what kind, and put this over the bottom of these screws. That way when you're mounting everything on the top, these stay in place and don't fall out. At this point, this is ready to actually mount up, but before we do that, there are a couple things we need to solder on here, and it's much easier to access when this is actually off. So for now, we're going to set the frame aside and work on our ESC as well as our flight controller. So as you can see, we have finished soldering the ESC. We've tinned all those pads. The only thing left to do, and you pretty much have to do this at this point, um, it's pretty much impossible to access later, and this is specific to this rush board. Down here, maybe a little bit hard to see, I'll put up a, a little screenshot of the diagram so you can see what these pins are, but basically we're trying to run a Crossfire Nano Receiver. If you're just running a serial port, you can solder directly to here. This is actually soldered for you, and all you need to do is plug in the connection up here. However, if you are running a Crossfire either Nano, Micro, or pretty much any Crossfire receiver, you're going to need both the receiver as well as the transmitter pinout um, in order to get telemetry and have that run properly. So, in order to sort of hack this, what we're going to do, first we're going to tin it up, then we're going to tin the transmitter pad on this board and we're going to solder this to the transmitter pad on the bottom, right there, just like that. It's a pretty small pad to solder to, but it's totally doable, and that'll allow us to run Crossfire. That's it for now, and we'll get to that a little later on. Now at this point, what we're going to do is measure these wires out so we can solder them to the board. So as you can see now, we have cut these wires to length um, and stripped them, so all we need to do now is grab our soldering iron in these wires and they will be ready to solder onto the pads. Okay, so with our wires stripped and now tinned, we are going to be soldering them to the pads. Um, the one thing to note here, and we'll actually work on this in just a second, 
is the motor direction that the, these motors will be spinning is very critical. Um, in most cases, you should be able to change that motor direction after the fact using the BL Heli firmware flasher. Um, but recently we've been having some issues with that. I don't know if it's just this board or what. So I'll just solder these on just one at a time, um, just in the order they came out of the motors, but we may need to switch them. So make sure you leave enough room for your wires to switch if you need to do that. Also going to take our little Crossfire Nano receiver and I'm going to actually solder this up. Reason being is that we can test to make sure the motors are going in the right direction. So if we need to, we can re-solder these before we finish building the drone. So here is the moment of truth. Normally we'd be doing this later, but since we need to make sure our motor direction is correct, we need to do this now. And what that is, of course, is plugging in the battery. There we go. Sweet. So it looks like everything is working. In this case, we will bring this over to Betaflight real quick, plug in the USB to the flight controller, and check our motors. All right, so we have our computer set up, and we are going to plug this in. What we want to do now is plug in this bad boy and test our motor direction. Here we go. Just touch the master here and... So we've tested our motor direction. We can now feel that these motors are spinning in the correct direction. These two are reversed. So we can now go back and we can solder these two. Or again, if your flight controller works with it, um, you can go in and reverse these in BL Heli if you'd rather do that. It's a little bit cleaner that way, but we're gonna do it the physical way. Now we have re-soldered those. Just to be sure we don't screw up and have to deal with this later on when it's all built up, I'm just going to plug this in one last time to double, triple check that everything is working correctly now. Alrighty, and everything looks good now. So we'll unplug this and we can finish up the build. Alright, at this point we have a couple things left to do. We have this video transmitter to put on and we have standoffs to do. I'm going to start with the standoffs. We have four here, and then we have a couple more little short ones that will hold on these bad boys later on. All right, now we're getting to the last couple steps here. We just have this little antenna mount. Also up here, we have our little TPU camera mounts. At this point, the build is nearly complete. All we have to do is add on these, which we will do right now. What we're about to do is mount this antenna. This is a little trick, I don't know if anyone else has used it, but I was looking for a way to cleanly mount this antenna. And what we're actually going to do is poke a little hole here and here on the other side. There's a couple of advantages to that. One is it's a clean mounting solution, super easy to do, and two is it's actually, you know, once it's in there, it's protected by these, so it makes it nice and safe. Okay, so we're getting very close at this point. All we need to do now is install the top plate. Um, just to make this a little bit easier, I'm going to put the battery strap in before I install that. All right, again, we are going to connect our flight controller. <laughs> this time it's a little bit trickier since we have to worm our way in here. So we will need our controller. Welcome to Open TX. All right, make sure not to hold this too close to your receiver, otherwise it'll freak out at you. Um, but what we're going to do is flip this over and we're going to enter the menu, just like that. Scroll down to bind and say bind. Now we have a solid green light on here. Might also be hard to see, but we have a solid green light on there. With that properly bound, we should be able to go down into the receiver tab. If you didn't see this before, we have changed this from the default to T-A-E-R. And we'll just say that one more time. Uh, we are also going to put in, as you can see, this is spinning here. And that is because 
our sticks are a little bit off. So all we're gonna do here is put in a little bit of a dead band. Again, if anyone isn't sure who's watching what I'm doing here, that's okay. We will be doing a more detailed video on how to set this all up later. Now we'll go down to modes. We need to add an arm range so we can actually fly the thing. And that should be it for now. We will connect the battery once more. And let's try arming it. Perfect. Motors are spinning in the right direction and everything seems to be working. So at this point, the build is pretty much finished up. We can take the lens cap off, mount a battery, and uh, put the props on. Alright guys, well that finishes up the build. As you can see here is the end product. I think it turned out super well, super clean. I'm really happy with it. If this video was helpful to you, make sure to go give us a like down below. Subscribe if you haven't already. All that good stuff. Also, if you have any ideas that we can make uh, videos in the future about soldering, about how to build a drone, anything you can think of, anything that you are looking to learn about drones, cinematography, anything like that, make sure to comment that down below. We're always looking to put out new content both on YouTube, um, on Instagram, IGTV, all that good stuff. So thanks so much for sticking around till the end. Really appreciate it. Again, hope the video is helpful and I will see you in the next one. Yeah.